Hello and welcome to another tutorial on dev.java website and in this tutorial we're going to uh, look at uh, the rest of the dev.java website so we'll have, we had an in-depth look at getting started with Java now let's look at the Java language basics and the Java language basics this part of the tutorial covers the basics of language including variables operators expressions statements blocks and control flow statements so to give you a brief overview variables are basically um, a placeholders for a memory address and uh, instead of actually telling the compiler what the memory address is to retrieve the value in that memory address we use variables which makes the source code much readable for a human operators are typical uh, um, uh, math operators plus minus times uh, modulus this kind of stuff Java doesn't allow operator overloading so except for uh, strings because the strings are final part of the JDK so uh, it doesn't make any confusion what happens if we add a double to a string it just converts the double to a string and append them together um, expressions any expression involves some variables um, and then uh, it has a meaning usually ex expressions have a return value in most cases a statement any a statement has to terminate with a semicolon a statement must might have multiple expressions in it but any line of code that basically ends with a semicolon is a statement uh, blocks uh, a code block is some anything that is between uh, two curly braces for example this piece is a code block this piece is a code block right and uh, uh, any basically block of code anything that is between so anything between a pair of curly braces is called a code block right uh, uh, this is uh, in Java also this concept also applies to C++ and uh, the reason that this sometimes becomes important is because of the concept of scoping which means any code block uh, defines a scope and uh, a scope uh, mostly is important uh, with regard to the local variables right now in C++ uh, objects have destructors so if you look, create a local object as soon as the code block ends the destructor is called and the object is destroyed in Java we don't have the concept of destructor so that doesn't really uh, um, uh, is applicable in Java but still uh, the, the local variables uh, are always uh, uh, basically um, uh, bound to the to the scope so if I say uh, 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 double a equals 1.2 so I created a statement because this is a line of code that ends with terminate with semicolon. I can define another one, b equals 2.5. Now I created two expressions. So a double a equals 1.2 is one expression. Double b equals 2.5 is another expression. And uh, this uh, a statement has two expressions. And this a statement ends with semicolon. And obviously we can even go to multi lines in Java it doesn't matter white spaces doesn't matter C is equal to 0.5 so this a statement these two lines includes one a statement because uh, it ends with a semicolon and uh, uh, it has three expressions right we're defining three local variables however I can also terminate here but then if I terminate here uh, now I have two a statements because two even in the same line uh, um, I have two statements here because uh, it's one line but there are two uh, statements because there are two things that end with semicolon now the compilation error here is that whenever you define a variable uh, at the beginning of the statement you have to declare the type right so now I have two um, statements that define three variables the first statement has uh, one expression in it the second uh, uh, um, the second expression uh, the second statement which ends with semicolon is uh, has two expressions and it is always best practice to put each line of code or basically put each expression uh, statement so put each statement on a, a separate line separate line in the source code now obviously the, when this source code gets compiled to class file these things don't matter white spaces it just becomes a, a sequence of bytecode instructions for the JVM right now we define these local variables in this code block 
let's see if we can redefine these variables uh, outside this code block and it is allowed so now this is redefinition redefining the uh, a variable right this a variable note that uh, this is not reassignment so we could also say a equals 2.5 and this gives us a compilation error that's because the compiler tells us you didn't define a any variable that you do sign as some assignment on it you have to first tell the compiler hey this variable exists it the type of this variable is for example double or float or whatever right so you have to first define it or basically declare it um, uh, a cannot be resolved now you might ask why why is it that we already defined it here but now uh, but when we try to reassign a variable to it it says that you never defined a because uh, local variables are bound to the most inner or the closest code scope and as we said these curly braces or curly brackets in Java they define a code block or a scope and local variables are bound as soon as we go as soon as we start here and hit this ending curly braces these variables are gone right so we don't have access to them anymore so you have to actually declare them and assign them so you can say double a this is called a declaration declaration what this means is that we're telling the compiler hey this variable exists so uh, reserve some memory in the java heap for this variable and it's going to hold a double which is a 64 bit 64 bits or 8 bytes right so the compiler understands what's going on and then we are assigning it assignment which also defines the value that is going to be placed in the memory address that this variable holds right now uh, another way is to uh, let me comment this out. another way is definition so we declared it and then assign it so it it, it was a two-step process another uh, way is to definition definition means uh, you declare it and immediately initialize it so the reason i'm putting an emphasis on the difference between assignment and initialization is that uh, when the compiler makes optimization um, a definition and initialization is slightly faster because it translates into one uh, uh, instruction instead of two um, so if I say a e double a equals 2.5 and then this is a definition plus initialization this is one statement previously declaration was one statement and then assignment was a second statement so uh, and uh, uh, again um, uh, if you are familiar with C++, especially when you create an object, for example, in C++, if you say object A equals something, uh, the, the compiler actually binds, translates that into the call to the copy constructor. If you declare an object and then assign it, the compiler creates more instructions because when you declare an empty object in C++, the uh, default construct is called and then assignment calls the assignment operator on that object but that's why uh, uh, initialization when you define you initialize it it's um, it's uh, it's more efficient in most cases and obviously the java's uh, way of uh, things is that you should always declare um, initialize something for example in a class if you uh, declare a variable let's say we say double a and uh, this See, this is a class variable or a field and you might think that there is a garbage value in this but that's not true because whenever the JVM loads a class it initializes all the variables with a default value right so anything it has to have a default value for double it means zero so it's a zero value zero floating point right and as you can see I have a field a global variable or a field variable or a member variable of this class a here we have a local variable a here in this scope and then we have a local variable again in the scope of the main function right so if i uh, when i before defining this if i say a equals five and then uh, as you can see um now we are in a static method so we have to uh, make it static right so as you can see it realizes that uh, the only thing that is uh, viable the only a that it can confer is the a which is the member function because this local variable doesn't exist and then this a is not defined but if later on i say a equals 10 
Now, as you can see, it infers that we're referring to the uh, local variable. So again, this is a concept that I want you to really understand this. Um, local variables always shadow local variables with the same name. So local variables with the same name always shadow the global variables or the class variables. Always uh, um, shadow. Always shadow uh, the uh, global variables. Right? And then in order to actually tell the compiler that, hey, we want this actually A, this global variable or class variable, we have to use the pointer to the object itself. We have to say this dot A, right? And obviously we cannot do it in the main because main is, is static and uh, this pointer refers to an instance of object, not a class. So we have to actually use the name of the class and now this works, right? So for aesthetic fields, uh, we have to tell it actually this A belongs to this class. It's not this local variable, right? Again, after this, if I say A equals 10, it sets this local variable. And obviously in Eclipse, it's very nice. When you highlight a variable, it tells you what it is. It tells you that this A is actually this A. It's not this one, right? It doesn't highlight it. This A is highlighted. This A is not highlighted. So again, uh, the most important thing to remember is the scoping. Sometimes you want to create extra scopes and um, these things are important, especially, especially if you're dealing with a language like C++. In Java, scoping is not that much important because of we don't have destructors, we don't care about memory management that much. But again, it's good to grasp the concept of scoping, especially when dealing with local variables. If you want to, if you don't want to pollute your namespace, you don't want to figure out what names to use you can limit the uh, local variables that you have to a scope so that you can use the same name after that scope ends all right so creating variables and naming them uh, creating primitive type variables in your program primitives are uh, float in double uh, uh, byte short and java is a language that supports primitive types other languages like Python, they don't have a primitive type by default. Everything there in is object, but Java decided to allow primitive types, which is, in my opinion, very great idea. We should have primitive types. There is no point of not supporting them. Creating arrays in your program. Arrays are fixed size uh, uh, elements, right? And again, uh, Java decided to uh, allow uh, primitive arrays. Uh, uh, or fixed size arrays, which is a great thing. That's the same capability that um, C and C++ also allow. Um, but the difference here is that in Java, an array is actually an object. So, um, so basically, if you go to C++ and or C in C or C++, if you say double uh, uh, X is uh, uh, an array of 1.1, 2.2, 1, right? If you do this, uh, then uh, this X is become in C++, C++ or C, X becomes a pointer. X is a pointer to the first element, right? And the compiler knows how many elements uh, are there, or basically the compiler knows when you tell, uh, you call the size of function of X, it knows the total bytes because it's a flat array. Now in Java, it's a little bit different because X is actually an object, actually an object. So uh, you can call methods, for example, x dot, uh, um, x dot length, for example, right? And then, uh, so x is an object, and but however, this is a primitive type object. What this means is that you cannot open the declaration of a double array because this is not a class. This is a primitive type. It's a built-in type, but it is still behaves like an object. I want you to understand the difference. For example, a string is a class. So if I hit command and open it, it actually tells me what the structure of a string class is. It's a class. It's not a like a built-in type. It's not a primitive type, right? However, a double array is a still primitive, but it behaves like an object. So you can say x dot length, for example, and uh, um, get information. So let's uh, I don't know. Let's do a sys out on um, x dot uh, length equals plus x dot length and as you can see it says x dot length equals 2 right so uh, primitive types you cannot open any declaration for them you cannot say for example uh, I want to know what the declaration of double is open declaration there is no declaration right 
Whereas if you create, if you select a uh, class type and say open declaration, it tells you what the definition of class is. So primitive types don't really map to a class file. Obviously we have wrapper types, but um, those are the topic for uh, another uh, tutorial. So using the var type identifier and then uh, um, so in a, in a recent version of Java, they actually added the var. So if I say uh, var here, let's see if this works. And it doesn't work because uh, uh, you have to, for the array, when you in the, uh, explicitly initialize it, you have to specify the type, right? But for example, if I, for the local variable type inference, right? Um, you can say var x1 equals 2. This is a valid uh, thing in JDK 15. I believe they added this from JDK 13 or 14. I'm not sure, but this was added local variable type inference, and this only works for local variables. And then what happens here is that the compiler infers the type. So if I hover my mouse here right now, it says that it's not being used. So let's do a sysad, for example, on x1. And as you can see, if I hover this, it says int x1, which means now the compiler inferred on the right hand side that, okay, two looks like an integer. So let's uh, assign it to an integer, right? Um, uh, if I say the two f, now the type inferred as float because the right hand side is float. If I say 2.0, this is by default a double literal so it confer it infers double if i say 2d or 2 capital d then it also infers that this is double right and um, for other types for example uh, let's say i want this to be a byte integer not a int right so we have to typecast it so byte and uh, let's see the type inference byte we can say this is short and then uh, uh, let's look at the type inference short. So this var is very nice. And the reason it's very nice is that uh, I can define another one. X2 is 2.1. The nice thing about this var here is that you then uh, you don't care about really declaring the types. And then it also makes all your variables and these assignments align with each other. Especially if you're defining objects and the name of objects is very long. Usually it's a good idea. And this is really not the fact that Java is be has become a dynamically typed. It's just a, a convenient way for the, the user to type the code. But behind the scenes in the class file, the compiler has already returned the type. So nothing is missing with the class file after the compilation is exactly the same as you type uh, short and double here. But sometimes you like your definitions, everything to align with each other. So because these names have different lengths, so just writing the var makes this simpler. Now, as I mentioned, this is for local variable types, which means you cannot do something like a static var a. For the fields of a class, you cannot do that because uh, this is a global scope in the class. And obviously, we haven't even initialized this. So the compiler really doesn't know what the type is. But even if I initialize this, the compiler still doesn't allow this, even though it can look at this, say, oh, okay, this is a double, but it doesn't allow that. And for some reason, they just decided to not allow the uh, type inference in the global scope of a class, right? So it says var, which pertains to type inference is not allowed. Now, interestingly enough, var is a, uh, is kind of like, um, let's add this back. You can actually have a variable with a name var. So var var is uh, a five. Let's see if this works. Yeah, it works. So you can, uh, so this var is not really like a keyword. The reason is that whenever you have a keyword, you cannot have a variable with the name of the keyword. For example, I cannot define a variable that has the name short because short is a keyword. Uh, delete this token. It says that, okay, I cannot, uh, even if I say short, short, it's not going to work. Syntax error, token short. Token is a built in, the short here is basically a keyword, which means when the, um, the compiler first uh, looks at the source code and tries to tokenize it into different words and then uh, create uh, basically that, uh, that lexical tree and see what it words, each word means and what each statement means. Then short is a keyword, so it doesn't allow having a name 
uh, that match having the name of the variable match the name of the uh, uh, of the keyword however var is exception to the rule because um, um, uh, uh, so let's say var. you can have a variable with the name var so let's say short var and then uh, uh, this is allowed and uh, uh, this var is allowed so you can have a variable with the name var and note what happens if I use explicit type here the integer can be typecast to short so this var is definitely short if I use var what this means what this tells the compiler is whatever the type of the right hand side is I want it to be also the type of this variable so this variable is uh, let's use var so that we get rid of this uh, warning and this, the type here is inferred to be int not short if I want it to be short I have to explicitly tell it that I want this to be short and compiler says okay right hand side you have an integer integer can be implicitly typecast so implicit uh, typecasting to short it's equivalent of saying that I want this to be explicitly typecast to short right implicit typecasting is allowed if you go from a variable with a longer length which int 32 bit to a short which is 2 bytes or 16 bit right it's allowed so um, this is the general concepts and obviously we will look at this in more depth so let's just quickly go through this using operators in your programs uh, summary of operators these are mostly math operators we have dot operators for accessing the fields or methods of a uh, class expressions statement of, and blocks control flow statements branching with switch statements branching with switch expressions so they added these switch expressions in the most recent version of java which is a very nice feature to have they are also adding more features such as pattern matching to switch expressions and um, yeah, those features are exciting and uh, we will look at them in the future uh, lectures. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Please stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one.